Okay, yeah, so. Where's the spoon? Super fast internet, advanced Wi Fi. I'm going to. Yeah, I did a little later. She, I would get her granddaughter cakes from me. I love what she's doing. That is so sweet. But we are headed to work. Y'all, I ain't vlog in how many days? I can't. I really can't remember the last time I vlogged for y'all. I just been tired. I've been extra tired. And two, I can't believe it's daylight outside. But you know, time went up an hour, so it's six, or yeah. It's supposed to be five o'clock, but it's six o'clock. Cause time went ahead out. But yeah, we are headed to work. I haven't, <clears throat> I haven't been up to much lately. And y'all, a lot of people might think it's not. Think it means a lot, but it does to me. Let me see when I posted that video. Sorry for all the rookies. Y'all know my truck make a lot of noise. A day ago. Normally, if I post a video a day ago, I only have like five views right now. Y'all want to know how many views we have? We have 81 views. 81 views, y'all. We are growing. And I'm extra happy. Like, after I bought the camera, I was questioning it. But then the quality of my video is all just immaculate. So I'm happy I bought the camera. But yeah, we headed to work. Uh, this is my last day. Because you know, I only work the weekends for school. And I work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But after this schedule over, I go back to Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We're starting. Next Sunday, I'll be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But I'm not working that weekend. I took off because I, um, well, I took off by accident. And then I tried to get the days back, but I couldn't get them back, so I'm out. But I'm going to Huntsville next week. So that'll be a whole nother problem. I might go out to eat with one of my friends Friday. Yeah, maybe no, or Thursday, Thursday or Friday. I'm not sure. Cause I want y'all to have something to watch while I'm gone. So I was thinking about doing kind of like a um, chat, chit chat with me, makeup video. Cause I haven't done it in a while. I haven't worn makeup since January. So January, February, March, that's three months. I haven't worn makeup cause I wore it first week of January. So yeah, it's been a month. But I'm kind of scared because y'all know what my face is. I might just buy some new brushes. I need to go get rematched too because I feel like my foundation kind of light. But yeah, y'all, I've been kind of on another note. I've been slacking a little bit. Um, I didn't read my Bible last night. It worked. And then like, I felt so guilty, but then at the same time, some of me made me like not want to read. And I did it, which was crazy for me. But when I get to work tonight, I'm gonna clock in, do what I'm supposed to gotta do when I right when I get there, and I'm gonna go ahead and read my chapters. And if I have time, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to y'all about them tonight. Yeah. Um, I need to edit a vlog. Because I posted the one for this week already. Then the one for next week, I will post. I'll schedule the post. But then, like, if I go out and do my makeup, well, not go out, but if I go out to eat and I do my makeup, then y'all have that to watch until the vlog. Just 
going to Huntsville with my cousin. She moved up there. I can't remember. I haven't seen her in a minute. It's been some months. But she's pregnant now. And I just needed a little getaway, like to relax. So I got me an Airbnb. We still gonna do the word, read our word, all that at the Airbnb. Nothing's gonna change. Every day. So we're gonna do that. Um then we're just gonna go out to eat. The first night I get there, I was kind of trying to figure out like because I'm going on a Sunday. I'm gonna stay Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, come back home that week. And I was trying to decide whether or not I was gonna like. I don't even know what I'm gonna say. If you haven't learned that yet from my vlogs, my my thoughts just run away. What was I trying to decide? I don't know. But yeah, so I'm going to Huntsville Sunday. I don't have no cakes this week. I only cupcakes. I gotta make some cupcakes. Some floral cupcakes. I never made floral cupcakes before, so that's gonna be new. But I know I can do it. Um, what else? How you can see, like, God bring you out of stuff that you're normal. Because, like, if somebody being paid with me, baby, I would pay it on 8,000. Eight, eight you know? Right. That's why I keep looking at the people because I feel like I look extra bright. Y'all, I'm gonna take the braids out already. Every time I get braids, I realize why I don't get braids. And it's because I'm not a braid girl. And I don't like having to deal with like putting them up and getting in the shower and all um, them being everywhere. And I don't know. And my scalp too tender anyway. That's why I don't get braids too, because like my scalp is so Even when I get a silk press after a week, for some reason, I get from me combing it or something, my scalp is so They like around my ears, and like now my head is so in the But it's not because they tight, because they're not tight at all. It's just my I got a sense of the scalp. It's something like psoriasis. But yeah. I hate to take them out though, because I was 200 and some dollars. I got them. The 22nd will be a month. But I got an appointment to get my hair done on the 16th, so it won't even been, I won't even been ahead of a full month. Unless I get reimbursed and then I won't be back. Yeah. Oh, and y'all wanna know another thing I realized? I be praying for everything. And like things I want in life. And then I'm always saying how like I've been by myself for 27, 28 years, 20, for 28 years, but then I was telling my friend, I was like, this one thing I never prayed for, I never prayed for God to prepare me for my husband, and to prepare him for me, and to send us to each other, I never prayed for it, I recently just, uh, I pray for every now and then now, but like, how I pray about my life and everything else, I never prayed about a husband in that same way. So, if you like me and you haven't had your amazing for, all, for a long time, then add that to your prayer list. And two, I don't go nowhere. They were like, she, she, my friend was like, how you gonna and my cousin? She tell me, they're like, how you gonna expect to meet somebody when? You don't even go nowhere. I don't do nothing but work school at home, make my cakes, and call it a day. But like, I be too tired to go anywhere. Like, I don't have time to do nothing. So, when I get chances now, I'm gonna start going more places. I'm gonna start going more places. I'm gonna stop being a house eat.
take it when I woke up, it was 77. Cause I called my mama. And I just checked it on my way and it's 81 news in a day. That's a record for me. But another one of my videos, like an old video, when I got ready for Houston, I ain't got no service on it. I think that one got like a hundred or something. But I don't got no service, so I can't load my YouTube. But we on the up and up. I'm gonna start posting shorts too. Oh, that's what I'm doing when I get to work. Like, the stuff I post on TikTok, I'm gonna post to make shorts for YouTube. Like when I just talk about the little daily sermon or something like that. I'm gonna start doing that. Because like, I, po I started posting on TikTok too, so I'm gonna do that. But yeah. And I like to dress up and get cute and stuff. And I hate that people feel like because you're a Christian, you can't be cute. What makes you think God want me to walk around looking ragged all the time? He does not. He want me to keep myself up. He don't want me walking around looking down and out. So, I'm finna start looking on the up hill. But I always like to dress up. Well, since I changed my life, I like dressing up and being cute. So I'm about to start doing that. And then Detroit did all that pass and the pass me and not the pool over. I'm still looking at the view found that study out. I think I know who it is. Now why you do all that sir you pass me anyway? Like, I mean you pull over. You could have waited till I got there. But yeah, I feel like I'm just rambling now, so I'll talk to y'all later. Hey y'all, uh, I don't know if y'all can hear me or not, but I just woke up and got out of bed. I could not get up to save my life today, and I'm still tired, but they worked me to death last night. Like, I had a patient all night, so I feel like I earned my check last night. But I don't know if y'all can hear me, but today is... March 13th, Monday. Uh, I had called a pharmacy to see if they had my shot. I don't know why. I had forgot about it, but my notification popped up for me to go, I mean, for me to take my medicine. And I was like, dang, I ain't even called to see if they had this shot. So they closed at 6. It is 4, I mean, 525. So I should make it up. I should make it. We're gonna see, I guess. But yeah. I guess I'm, I'm just about to eat. <laughs> I ain't even ate today. I got my food in a bowl right here. And y'all from the bottom. I'm just gonna listen. I got a test tomorrow. I ain't get a chance to study none of that night. So I'm just about to listen to the voiceover and eat my food. This is Miss Joyner, Anna. That is my side hustle. I want to be a singer on the side, but Usher is not my specialty. I know I did not give him proper, um, you know, props, but Miranda Lambert is my go-to girl, but I did try for y'all. I'm gonna let y'all recuperate. I know y'all are still laughing, but that's all the excitement for this PowerPoint from, from this point forward. So y'all are welcome. So we're going to start our slideshow. I want to use this as a study resource Like when I get my hair did, that's why I can't keep it alone either because 
When I had got that sew in the other time, the last time I had sew in, man, my mom took my head and it like snow head got stuck in my head. It was so nasty. Yeah. And I don't think I had had that over like two weeks. You need a scalp shampoo. That's all. Awesome. You get a good scalp shampoo, you won't have it'll reduce it, and you'll just have to use it. You know, like treatment, like every month, two months. That feels so good. Talk then if you got that's why I say you gotta catch me. I'm not gonna I don't know how to turn around and off. It just it just flipped. Yeah, you gotta catch me. Yeah, that's how I do it. Yeah, I think I got a little bit of a scalp issue. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get some scalp lotion. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get some scalp lotion. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get some scalp lotion. Yeah, I'm gonna Baby, I'm telling you, I be crying. Why you be crying? Gas. <laughs> Don't you know, I feel my gas light like came on when I got down here. I feel it, it was seven, eight dollars. Baby, I guess you're doing a little. You did a little something. Stand up and look at it. Okay, I'm pulling out my yoke. Okay. Okay. Phone call completed. Phone call completed. We are headed to get our toes done. I thought it's supposed to like rain bad all day, but it's just like a drip drip. So I was like, let me get on up. Because I need my toes. And I'm debating. I'm debating if I'm going to get my nails done or if I'm just going to buy some um, braids on Because I don't know. But I might see if they can do me like an overlay. A real, real short overlay. Get a new color. Because you know, I'm not supposed to have nails for school. So. I guess we'll see. But I, I don't know. I want them short, like how my real nails short. So we're gonna see if they can do it. But yeah, y'all, I've been in one of those eras lately where it's like, I don't wanna do nothing. <sighs> Hold up, I'm gonna um, drop these drop ears off. And I will show y'all, but I just got the camera to sit where it ain't going nowhere. So I'm not uh, taking them out. I mean, I'm not taking the camera down. Let me see. I can't show y'all. My crazy tail hit the wrong house. Phone call completed. I went to her father at our house instead of her house. <sighs> but yeah, 
I just been at a point where it's like, I really don't know. I really just been real unmotivated. And I feel like I haven't been in my word, but I've been reading every day. That's why this video gonna be counted like everywhere. Because I still, I still been reading every day, but it's like, you know how like when you read, every time, usually when I read, every time I read, I get a message. And it ain't been like that lately. But like, these rows are right now. Uh, but like last night was the first night I read in the morning and I got a message or whatever. I don't know. But it was just, I was read the last of X. So I'm thinking it was like chapter 26 or either, it was 26 through 28, one of them. Out of the whole book where he was talking about how, um, when um, Paul got bit by the snake and that he was supposed to die or whatever. And he didn't die and that's when people were like, okay, he protected and all this stuff. So I'm just like, I mean, I got some from it, and I was showing like how the enemy will throw stuff at you to harm you, and to, you know, tear you down. Some people try to do some stuff that's supposed to take you out, but if you keep had a faith and know that God covering you, and you one of his people, it ain't gonna do nothing to you. But I just been upset because I feel like I haven't been as close as I normally am. I mean, I know they say it's gonna be like that sometime, but I don't like the feeling. And I feel like, you know, this is what my channel's supposed to be about, so I'm just, you know, I just feel, I don't know. And then I booked the Airbnb in Huntsville to go see my cousin, because we haven't seen each other in a while. And, um, that was good. and she pregnant, so I booked the. I booked the Airbnb to go see her. But now I don't even wanna go. And I used to get like this sometimes. Like, I wanna do stuff. But then, when it gets close time to doing it, I just give up. This is where I go. She said she stay in 201. I can't even see these screen rooms. I mean, the apartment. But yeah, it's like, I, I haven't been like that. No, I used to be like that a whole life. Like, well, if I said I was going to do something, then all of a sudden I'm just like, I don't want to do it no more. And I just bag out. And it's crazy, because I haven't felt like that in a long time. And it's just like, I don't know. I guess this is it. Yeah, let me turn around. But yeah, um, I don't know. I just feel like I'm in a funk. That's the best way I know to explain. <sighs> Thank you. He ain't no you are, drunk. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Hit him on side head. <laughs> okay. Thank you. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I ain't been like this in a while. And I kind of, I don't know, like, now, I, I mean, right at this moment, I want to put it on because I haven't been feeling good, like, for a while. I haven't feel good. And I don't know. Because I'm going to the next shot. These people going to be talking about me because my mama, y'all, well, I ain't up. Uh, well, it's going to be in the vlog that I'm about to upload. It's on paint patch. And they about did one. And I got one on my knee. And it smell like an old man. But I don't care because I'm hurt. And it seems to be working. So, hey. I don't care. 
But yeah, I'm just getting my toe the I gotta buy some treats in the toy for the dog. Look at this. But yeah, she told me she got a playlist so she can listen to it in the car. And then, but I think it was sweet because she one of the places she wanted to go eat it. They play music. She was like, I don't want to take you out your ear to me. Her dog. I don't see never my teeth. <laughs> I guess because it's dog. What do you do? But yeah, she she's nice. I guess she all right. I love you, Shaq. We ain't ate in a minute. Since January. I wonder what Kiara was doing. Turn it off. Hi, good people. A bitch. <laughs> we tired. Y'all ain't seen Jade in a while. Hi, y'all. <sighs> what did they say I ain't cooking no more? Open your own. Hey. Alright. to head down the road. I gotta put my stuff in the 
weariness, with depletion. Am I talking to the right people? Can you feel it? You got you got a your weariness don't even make sense sometimes. You got it in the morning. You just got out the bed. You're tired. It's a spirit, and we need strength to deliver. Type it on the line. Give me strength to deliver. I'm coming into my harvest. I'm tired of us, and we thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name, at the top of your lungs. Uh, pass your seat to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. Bless it as it passes by. Hi guys. So we are headed down the road. I um I started off listening to the TDJ sir, but it's just like someone that we listen to. Maybe Jeff B, but it's like I've been thrown off with him ever since. He was saying about how um, the people in the church that do the most praise make the most noise don't be able to put the ten dollars in the collection plate. And I'm like, that made me feel like you you say we can't you know like we can't pray good if we ain't putting a hundred dollars or over like two hundred dollars in the collection plate. What if that's all I had to give? What if, I mean, what, what if I ain't got nothing to give? God no my heart. I came to church, I gave what I had, and that's all that matters. It don't matter how much I have, I put in that plate. If I ain't got but 25 cents, and that's all I put in that plate, God gonna accept my offer, and he know my heart, and he know my comfort, because I didn't have a comfort at all. And I feel like that made people feel like, well, you ain't got money, you can't go to church. And his sermon live and one, and it like something that like, I really cannot miss and he was talking about money then and starting out. And like, he, he he talked about like, a lot of times he make it seem like if you don't have no money to give, you ain't gonna get no blessing. And saying, and he always talking about receiving stuff, but I don't know, maybe that's just me, how I feel about it. So I gotta find me some another sermon to listen to. Me. But yeah, my weed might look like it hunched up because I lift it up because my head. But I can't look in front of it because I can look right now. People who are not yet believers outside of the house was this supernatural invasion of the Holy Spirit. It is my contention that the Holy Spirit has unfortunately been replaced today with sophisticated 21st century Christianity. At the next light, turn right. We celebrate right. our facilities more than the Holy Spirit. We celebrate human personalities more than the Holy Spirit. We celebrate notoriety more than the Holy Spirit. We celebrate and replace... At the light, turn right onto US 11 we North. why the church is not on fire. And if the church isn't on fire, why should the world pay attention? But they're going to pay attention here in Acts chapter 2 because we have a church that had gotten ablaze suddenly out of heaven, igniting God the problem. They said, we want some men who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we got a big problem and we need big Holy Spirit. So we need some spirit-filled leaders. I love what the author of Hebrews says in Hebrews 12, 29. He says in verse 28, that we are part of an unshakable okay. kingdom. We belong to something that the world can't mess with. We're involved with something that secular politics can't invade. That secularism and socialism, and communism, and even capitalism can't mess with. He says, because you're part of an unshakable rule, an unshakable kingdom. And then he closes in verse 29 with these words, for our God is a consuming fire. Oh, he's a consuming fire. He's not just a fire. He's a fire that consumes, eats it up, Thank you. takes you it too. over. He's talking about the Old Testament sacrificial system. About how he used his words. 
As a young boy, Jesus was found by his parents in the temple as he sat among the teachers listening and asking them questions. And the text says that all who heard him were astounded at his and understanding and his answers, which shows us that Jesus used wise words. When driven into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted, one of the temptations in particular was for Jesus to use his words to command the stones to become bread. The issue being that Jesus was being tempted to utilize his divine power to serve himself. But Jesus responded to each of Satan's temptations with the scriptures. Jesus used God's words. When a, when a man possessed by a demon came out of a synagogue, Jesus spoke directly to the demon, uh, commanded it to come out, to which the spirit obeyed. The onlookers said among themselves, what is this word? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. Jesus used liberating words. One day, while, while Jesus was asleep inside of a boat, the wind and the waves started to break against it, filling the boat with water, while the disciples used their words to accused Jesus of lacking a compassionate under awareness of their needs. Jesus spoke directly to the sea saying, peace be still, calming the winds and calming the waves, which shows us that Jesus used authoritative words. When a rich young ruler came to Jesus asking how he could inherit eternal life, the Bible says that when Jesus looked at the young man, he loved him and said to him, you lack one thing. Go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor and come follow me the rich young ruler walked away sad because he loved his money more than he loved his maker and Jesus knew this but he still spoke hard words that night who you are some of our current personal issues are because of an old trauma when someone told us something that broke our sense of self or our identity where now we are spending all of this time in prayer or energy with denial or money on therapy to undo the power of a mere sentence truly the proverb is right. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. This afternoon or morning, we are going to hear from James on the subject of the tongue. As you already know, James creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, the use the left lane. What you say is more important than you could ever imagine. So. the house tour well the airbnb tour um when i got up here i just went over to Asha's house and we ended up going to pick up her son and then we went to five below and target and i um we ended up going to longhorn to eat and like i really don't be having an appetite so i only ordered the little chicken bite things and some the mush loaded mushrooms it didn't have, I mean, my food was the last to come, and I ordered two appetizers. Mind you that. And then, after she decided to bring me my chicken bites, she told me that they were out of mushrooms. So, I didn't get my mushrooms, and I was sad at that point. Because I love mushrooms, but it was alright. So, I feel like I need something else to eat. Y'all, I'm using DoorDash for the first time. Hopefully, I did it right. I put the address in on where I'm at now. And, um... Hopefully, I get the food. Let's see what it say. It's still preparing. I got something from a place called... Bird dog. I'm trying to show y'all what I got. Mm. Uh, 
I never heard of it. So yeah, we're going to see how they go. Mm -hmm. Here are these bird dogs. And this is what I got. It's a chicken tender with honey, mustard, grilled onions, cheese, green onions on a brioche bun. Oh, and it comes with two hot dogs. I didn't know that. I thought it was just one. And I got some fries. The fries I got were lemon, and I got lemon pepper seasoned fries. I know I ain't gonna eat all of it, but it is what it is. But yeah, uh, I was was gonna go out to eat, then I get cute, but I changed my mind. I'm gonna go tomorrow. I'm just about to do my reading for tonight, and um, I guess Donald's gonna work even though it's spring break. But I don't want to, um, I don't want to have all that stuff to do the week that I go back. So I'm just going to do that. And y'all know I told y'all I've been having trouble going to sleep at night. So I'm up all night and I sleep all day. But I feel like it's because I work at night. And even when I'm not at work, my mind don't correlate that I'm off. It still think I'm at work. And I got a slight headache. Yeah, but y'all know I've probably been having a headache. So I got me a goody powder and this is my Plaquenil that I was supposed to take at 5 o'clock if you know you know what that's for but I saw when we was in Target I was trying to find something that wasn't too crazy but this is what I get for not reading because I just I didn't want to get some big I want to get some small so I, in case I didn't like it or it didn't work, but it's the Ollie Sleep Aid with immunity. It say it's for restful sleep and immune support, and it has melatonin and vitamin C. It don't do it say how much one tablet is, but it say to take it 30 minutes before bed, and you're supposed to dissolve one tablet in your mouth, then swallow no water needed. And I'm just scared because what if it's nasty? I didn't know it was a dissolvable tablet. I thought when I first seen dissolve, I thought it was the dissolvable, like the pack, the stuff you, but why would it be a pack that was in the field bottle? I'm sorry. So I went to my car and got my water to put it in a water bottle, but apparently that's not what it is. So yeah, I'm scared to take it, but I'm going to take my, um, Goody first in this platform here. And then I'm going to take it now, but hopefully I don't go to sleep and I miss my food. I don't know why I keep reading it. It ain't bad. But um lately for my reading. Okay. That made my stomach tingle a little bit. It, ain't, it wasn't nasty, but it just unsettled me. But I'm catching y'all up on my readings. So, um, I don't know if I told y'all about it, but the first one is going to be Ezra. Um, in this chapter 4 verses 1 through 5 
Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the descendants of captivity were building the temple of the Lord God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and the heads of the father's houses and said to them, Let us be with you, for we seek God as you do. And we have sacrificed to him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assyria, who brought us here. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the heads of the fathers, house of Israel, said to them, You may do nothing with us to build a house for our God, but we alone will build to the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. The people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. They troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. And okay, what I was trying to say was, when they saw and heard that the descendants were building the temple and building the place of God, they wanted a part in it. And I kind of feel like that play a part into where when people see the potential you have and the things that you have in life going and the thing in the direction that God has headed for you, they see the potential and the blessings at the end and they want part in it. But once they're denied that part and what God has for you, that's when they go against you. Because it says when they ask the fathers of the house and the heads of the houses to be a part and to help them build, they told them, no, we're doing this for our good ourselves. And we don't need you as a part of it. And that's when they started trying to discourage them and start throwing things in to try to make them not do it and to make them feel like what they were doing was wrong and it wasn't going to be successful. And they even like wrote letters sent it to kings trying to make it feel like the people of Israel were going against other kings and trying to make it just hard for them. And I feel like that's what a lot of people do nowadays. Like they see you doing something. And they see the light God has on you. And they see the potential in everything that he has for you. And the roads you're headed down. And once they are denied part in it, that's when they get to the point where it's like, okay, I'm going to discourage her or him. Or how, or they're like, okay, I'm going to make it seem like that ain't going to work. I'm going to put in that ear, that's a bad idea. I'm going to tell them somebody else doing the same thing. Well, none of that even matter, you know? So, I kind of feel like that was a good little take back. And then, um, I also wrote chapter 6. Well, for 6 through 10, I wrote, Even though they had people against them and trying to destroy their purpose of what God had intended them to do, God still allowed them to prosper and the enemy had to supply their needs. And... Um, on down the line, like it was so much stuff throw into them to make them discouraged, but they didn't get discouraged. They continue to do what God wanted them to do, and I feel like that's what a lot of times what we do. We let people get in our head or talk in our ear, and just dis discourage us from the purpose that God has for us, and we don't do it. But the descendants didn't do that. They continue to do what God told them to do, and in the end, if the same people that were trying to discourage them and make their way hard ended up having to give them everything they needed to build a temple and supply all their wood and lumber, all the fabric, all this money, food, everything they needed, it would have to end up being supplied by the enemy. So that just go to show you like don't let people discourage you. They gonna like and he said, um, I'm not good with being exact with scripture yet. But um when they um oh he said I will make your enemies your footstool like they they tried to discourage them and ended up having to get them everything they needed to do what God had told them to do so don't let people discourage you okay and next thing I mean I read X two and what I wrote from X was um. The first thing you I talked about this in another vlog to y'all probably seen what well, the previous week was long. Um it's was chapter three, verse six. Then Peter says, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ Nazareth, rise up and walk. 
And I put sometimes we want things and the things we want aren't even compatible to the things God has waited for us. This man asked for silver and gold, but God gave Peter the ability to restore him to walk. And I said in the other vlog, I talked about how like we ask God for simple things and worldly things and things we think we need when that's not even what we that's not even what God wants us to ask for. He wants us to ask for the unthinkable, the unbelievable. Because this man asking God to I mean, this man at the gate begging for money. And he stumbled across somebody that gave him that God gave the ability to give him his ability back to walk. Y'all think that man that man had not been able to walk for forty years. And Peter just touched him and told him, Get up and walk. And he got up and walked away. Now we, we ask God for things and want certain things from him, but the things we be wanting don't even be in 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 the category of what he be prepared to give us. He wants us to ask for the things that nobody else will think that he could ever do for us, which is still unthinkable. Then I also wrote, Peter didn't take credit for healing the man. He let it be known that it was Jesus that t that did it through him. And a lot of times when stuff I put, well, I don't even have to read what I wrote because I remember because I feel strong about this. A lot of times when we... um. A lot of times when we do things or like stuff happen in our life and we feel like we did it when we really didn't do it. God was the one who made that happen. Jesus made that happen for us. Like a lot of times we'll be like, okay, I manifested this. Did you manifest or you prayed for it? Yeah, God said to write it down and let it tear, but that means to write it down and wait. He tell you whatever you ask him for to act like he said already happened and it'll be yours. Okay, I'm back. But I don't remember where I left off at. Where did we leave off? Oh, you're talking about how like a lot of people feel like they made it happen in their life. But if you say you prayed to God, how did you make it happen? You prayed for it. But he didn't have to give it to you. He could have waited as long as he wanted to make it happen. But here we go saying we made it happen when we didn't. Um, then I wrote 5 and 38. And now I say to you, keep away from those men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you can't overthrow it. Lest you even be found to fight against God. And then just go to show you like, um, what God has for you is for you. If you if you trying to do something, you put God in it. Can't nobody stop it. Especially if He know you you need it in that moment, or you can handle it in that moment when He send it for you. It ain't no stopping it. I feel like I look crazy. <laughs> and I mean, like when I got done, but it just can I mean can't nobody fight go against God. What he have for you and for you, like like I said. And he said like if it come from God then who can stop it? Can't nobody overthrow God. I don't care what they do or what they try. Um then I just wrote for the last little part I put after today's reading I just have questions that I know God will answer. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um and I told him I didn't need more clarification. I'm not going to say the questions I asked him. And then I just wrote a prayer under after my questions. And then I wrote, I've been reading Mark. And I just be writing little notes. I wrote Paul was also named Saul. And he used to beat people who believe in God before being called to be a disciple. Um, and then yesterday's reading. Um, for a note, I am started reading Mark. And I wrote that God baptized, um, I mean, John was baptizing people before God came back. And he was warning them that, you know, something way greater than I is going to come, but this is until he get here. And then I wrote Mark 2, 17. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And it's somewhere else um, in the 
in the Bible. I'm gonna have to look. I'm I'm gonna have to start. But see, I don't read this stuff, so I'm reading it to y'all. So, but I'm gonna have to start reading it beforehand and get check facts because it's another scripture that says um it says something to a sense of um a thousand if a thousand saved people are. It's something about rejoicing over one person who has turned to Christ and rejoicing over those who are already of Christ. Something like that. That's not exactly what it say, but y'all should know what I'm talking about. But yeah, like it's saying, for those who like, people think they're perfect and say like, what you need God for? If you're already perfect, you don't need him because what he going to do for you? He comes to help the imperfect. You know, so like, like it said, a physician don't come to help those who are already well. He comes to help those who are sick. So if you don't, if you don't need me, then what 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 you calling me for? Yeah, what time I took that melatonin? It's kicking in. I might not do no listen tonight, but hey. Um, what I was about to say? Yeah, like he called, he come to call his children to him that aren't in him. Like he already see I'm headed his way. He already was before I fully submitted to him. He was coming after me. He got when when I fully turned my life to Christ, he was joyous then. But now he's just turning to rejoice for somebody else who's he turned. Since he already turned me around, he did his job. So now it's time for him to do it for somebody else. Cause they kind of go and play with the brother and the the two brothers, and one of them stayed with the dad on the farm, and the other one got his inheritance and went somewhere else. And then he went up wherever he went. He got broke. I think it was the particle scene, the practical part. I might be wrong, but he went out and spent all his inheritance, and then he ended up having to come back. And the other son was sad because the dad never rejoiced for him being there doing everything that he, the dad wanted him and needed of him. But when he saw the other son coming back, he rejoiced and thought apart, and he was like, "Why do you? Why do he get all this special treatment when he been out there doing wrong?" And I've been here doing right the whole time. And it was something to the sense of, I knew, you know, the dad knew that the other son wasn't going to stay away. But to see his other son come back, then that was a joyful moment because he realized, like, his mistakes and he wanted to come back to do right. Um, then I wrote, Simon was named Peter. Judas was the one that betrayed God. Jesus healed. And so far in the red to the point where he healed the paralyzed man. The um, lady was here with the issue of blood, um, the, the um, king's mother who had the fever, and the man's daughter who, the um, I think he was a, not a priest, but he was something of the tabernacle, I think. And his daughter had died, but Jesus went back and he was like, she just asleep and he woke the little girl back up. But like with the lady with the issue of blood, he, um, he didn't even see her for himself. She just took his garment and he felt her faith in the spirit that somebody had been healed. And they just go to show like we just reach out and touch his garment. It's a blue a blues. <laughs> it's a gospel song that I like, um Broken but I'm healed, I think. And he's saying like reach out and touch the master's robe. Because um it was like you've been to your position, but there's been no change in your condition. And you're like, reach out and touch the master's road. He has healing for your mind, body, and soul. And that made me think of her. Like, all she did was reach out and touch his road, and she was healed. But yeah, I haven't done my reading for today. I think these are things work because I'm getting sleepy. Like, it's coming down on me. But yeah, this, I just want to catch y'all up on what I had been reading. I think I already told y'all about James. Yeah, I read James to y'all already. And I read Philemon and Titus. Uh, yeah. So I read all that to y'all. So tomorrow I have to tell y'all about what I read tonight and mark what I just told y'all was the first five chapters that I read so now I gotta read six, six seven, eight, nine, and ten and then I'll tell y'all what I learned about that tomorrow but for the food I got 
What a big old, they look like some chicken bites in their thing. Yeah, I know I'd be paranoid about this food. And I'm up here. I don't know nobody on this side. And then I ordered some fries. And these supposed to be lemon pepper fries. I think it'd be alright if I had some ketchup. Or like some kind of different sauce. I, I'm a sauce person. They kind of taste like slim chicken fry and you added some lemon pepper on them. I'll let me get bread. So I had to break it. It's spicy. It didn't say it was spicy. What was spicy? Now I need my phone so I can even see what I'm eating. Don't that supposed to be spicy? I always say wild honey mustard, so maybe that means spicy. I don't know. Hi, guys. Don't mind my head. But though that um <laughs> that medicine that I left sleep aid thing I took last night. But it crazy cause my, my brain still wanted me to wake up. My brain still wanted me to wake up. So I went to bed. What time? I took it like 8 or 9. And I slept good until about. I say 1 o'clock. Then I got back up and I didn't go back to bed until after 4. But then I still woke up at 8. So I just been laying around. And I, it's, it's 11 4 to 8 now. I'm not going to go nowhere. I'm just going to eat the other thing I had from last night. And, um,. Yeah, call it a day. And then I probably wait until later in the night and go eat somewhere cute. So now I'm just about to eat that, watch the TV, do my reading for today. And after I do my reading, I'm gonna do a little work for school. 
and yeah, that's about it. So I just thought I'd check in with y'all and let y'all know what I was doing. Just nothing. I'll probably go to brunch tomorrow since it's my day's day here. But yeah, I'll see y'all later. thing I got was um, for chapter 6 I wrote that God fed he fed the um, people with the six loaves of bread and two fish and that he walked on water to the disciples um, then 7 and 19 because it doesn't enter his heart but his stomach for his eliminated does purifying all food and to talk about that y'all know I don't eat pork beef I mean I don't eat pork I don't eat seafood um, like shrimp and crawfish and oysters and stuff like that. And like I had prayed and asked him to show me like, do I supposed to not eat them or do I supposed to eat them? But like, normally he talked to me through dreams and I had a dream that <laughs> um, somebody was grilling and there was a whole bunch of pork on the grill. And next thing showed it was a lot of people, like nobody was eating it, but then a lot of people ended up showing up and everybody was just like overweight but it was overweight to the point of being unhappy and miserable and like some of the people couldn't even walk so i took that as my sign is i'm not supposed to eat it but now i'm like well maybe he just don't want me to eat it i don't know but yeah um then i wrote seven and nineteen oh i just told y'all that and then I wrote eight and six. He also fed another multitude, but he did it with um, seven loaves of bread. So he fed people twice, not just the one time with the five loaves and the two fish. He also did it with um, the seven loaves. And then eight and thirty-five for whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. And I feel like that can go the way with sometimes how some of us want to talk about Christ, but we don't because of the new reputation we will uphold. And we don't want to lose the person that other people knew before now. But in that same sense, we're still not doing our due, due diligence to God. And we're losing ourselves in the um, in the midst of it, you know. And then it says 836, for what will it profit a man if he gains the word but loses his soul? And like a lot of times, that can go with what I just said too. How often, sometimes we would like to, you know, do more things and have more things, worldly things. And that can go with like that, get ready with me, I posted about how um I had, you know, God spoke to me about buying all this stuff and stuff. And like we want the things of the word and the things that the world deems needed or to make you a certain type of person but at the same time 
we losing our soul with God putting all this stuff before him and getting all this stuff and gaining all the worldly stuff. We losing our place in him. Hmm. And then 9, 45 through 50, um, it talked about, you know, how like if your left foot causes you to sin, cut it off. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. And it says it'll be better to go to heaven with one foot or one eye than to lose your spot in heaven by keeping them. So I tied that to people because sometimes we don't want to let go of certain people, but sometimes those people are our downfall. Or either not just people, but like jobs and um, money and all that stuff. Like we we let it have us in the chokehold. And instead of to cut it off, we would rather, you know, keep it and stay around that person or not to be like, you know, tell them, explain to them, like, I can't hang with you no more. And we continue to do all the things. And I'm just saying, like, people make you do certain things. But sometimes, if you're trying to stop doing something, if you keep hanging around the people who are doing it nine times out of ten, that's going to make it harder for you to stop doing Because, like, if you're trying to stop smoking, but all your friends smoke, and you the only one trying to stop. If you continue to hang around them, it's gonna be hard. So like, it's better to cut them off. If in like, if you trying to get close to God and you the only one in your group that's doing it, and nobody else is trying to do those same things, then it's gonna be harder for you to try to build your relationship because nobody's around you is on that same level as you. So yeah, don't let people and things cut off your blessing. Cut them off before they able to do that. Um, then I wrote 10, 20 through 22. He told the guy about the guy he um did about the Bible, did everything, but he was obsessed with luxury. And God told him to sell all of his items and give to the poor. And the man was sad when God told him to do that because he cherished those things. And that goes to what I talked about in my Get Ready with Me. Also, where we cherish the things of the world and we put them over God. And like half of the time we pray for so sometimes we ask him for something of this world. And the man was saying, he told him, you sell all your things, give to the poor and come back and you can walk with me. And the guy walked away and he was sad because he had to do that. But yeah, don't don't let these worldly things consume us. And then I wrote 10 and 31, many who are first will be last and last will be first. And that goes like, you know how like the people who live their life right, we always feel like we're behind those who don't live their life right. Or like we're trying to live by the word and doing what God's telling us to do, but then you got this other person over here scamming and they're living their best life, no worries. But you over here living check to check and, you know, not even able to take a half of a vacation because you're trying to do right and you feel like you always behind but I mean his words say those who are first will finish last and last will finish first so our time is coming and we can't keep comparing it to those who do wrong because we're not supposed to do that also we're not supposed to worry about what the next man is doing and only worry about ourselves and it also said um I didn't write it but I highlighted it it said that um a re uh, when it was talking about the guy who was sad that God told him to give up all his stuff. He said, a rich man rarely ever makes it to heaven. He, they say his chances are some more, uh, is more chances of a camel going through a needle than the rich man to make it to heaven because they cherish those positions and they put them on a pedestal before they put God on the pedestal. So yeah, don't let the riches fool you. But yeah, that's the word we got for today. I'm waiting on Ashley. I had said I was gonna go ahead and go somewhere and eat today, but I'm not sure where I want to eat. I keep looking at myself because I feel cute, y'all. Oh my god, it's this. And I find the curl in my hair right, the curls, baby. But, um, we supposed to go try this snack place. It's called Pepito's. Let me see if I can go to it. Dancing inside was very nice. It gave me a little taste of Mexico. The owners were nice and the vibe was nice as well. So I ended up getting a mango nada. And the amount of chamoy and tahini they give you, automatic 10 out of 10. And I also got cheese takis. I mean, you can't go wrong with cheese and takis. Yeah, so we're supposed to go try it. Um, I want to go somewhere and eat tonight, but I'm not sure what's open. And then, like, I really, if I want to go eat, I need to start getting ready now. I just got out the shower with, and I already know what I got on my way. It's just a black dress, and I got some little shoes from Amazon, and I got the purse off Amazon. 
it's a deep but yeah so i might go there grill on mine this is what i'm gonna wear tonight not gonna wear the shoe with the scrap but the other shoe and i got a jacket since it's cool out I asked her, was it cold outside? She said, no, it's 64 degrees. I opened the balcony door. So, it's I cold to me. So, yeah. But I guess I'll see y'all if we do, if we go. I don't know what she is. But, yeah. I'll see y'all later. Do it. What you want to show your icon? You done ate it up. Come on, we gotta go pay for it. Said you broke. When I said that? Did Oh, you pay for money? Come on, sit down. Get you a nap. I don't want to. Too strong. Spicy. Is that bad? What's in the corner? Pineapple. Let me get a spoon. That's what I get. like it? So y'all, I'm about to go to this place called Kona Grill. I'm trying to let my car warm up a little bit. But I showed y'all the outfit, but I still gotta show y'all when I get out.
Iya naman. Ay, yung soya mo. Cute. Everything from Amazon. Except the jewel. I mean, <laughs> the jacket. I got it from Fashion Nova a long time ago. <sighs> yeah, I'm going back to the house. Where they heat it.